Satnam, I'm Nirvara Singh Khalsa, and here we are in December, the last month in 2012. And December 21st, 2012, we start a whole new cycle of time according to the Mayan calendar. I'm sitting in front of this wonderful painting by P Patricia Dobrin, Amritkar. And if you saw the video last month, and I hope you've done those two Kriyas along with me, that you saw this painting before of sacred geometry with the wonderful colors of, of orange and yellows, the warmness of, of, of walking into a new time and a new space. We're in the first year of the Aquarian Age. We celebrated you know, the whole first year of 11-11-11 last month. And Yogi Bhajan was very specific about, and he talked a lot about exactly what it meant to live in the Aquarian Age. Let me read you exactly what he said about it. It's pretty thought-provoking, actually. This is in a lecture he gave in 1991. So the Aquarian Age has set in. Piscean Age, I want to know. Aquarian Age is, I know it all, I will serve. Piscean age is learn, pay your karma. Aquarian is, I am the karma, no payment. Now, you're not going to fit in, in that, and that's a tragedy. You can swim in a lake, but now you're in the ocean. Action and reaction now will be simultaneous. If somebody now tells you, wake up, it's a waste of time. The only thing that one can say is, are you awakened? Answer is yes, fine. Answer is no, wrong. That's it. This is the rule of self-rule. You are never wrong. You cannot be wrong. And you have no authority to be wrong. So long as you are you, not for you, if you choose to be for you, then you have to be against you. You will never know. You are for you or you are against you. All you will know is how much I can sell and who is buying me. That continues the theme that we talked about last month. The idea of creating this identity of existence of yourself is not for the sake of anything else. If you create that, you create a polarity. And the polarity of something is nothing. The polarity of being for you, that means that you will be against you. And you will never have that experience of being your true self in existence for the sake of nothing you to be you the technology of kundalini yoga is amazing for actually creating the projection of the self so that you can so that you can be you and that the divinity of you you become no separation from you from god and from the divinity itself one of the most powerful techniques that Yogi Bhajan taught, but of course, was through the Shabad Guru, through Nod, through the use of mantra. And very early on, he talked about eight vibration mantras, Ashtang mantras, and the Adi Shakti mantra, Ekumkar, Satnam, Siddhi Wahiguru, is the mantra that we all practiced in the early days, and it continues to be part of the Aquarian Sadhana. There's another version of that mantra, of the two and a half cycle version that we chant in the morning, is a three and a half cycle version that's called Laya Yoga. And in the book 21 Stages, we practice this uh, Laya Yoga version of the Ashtang Adi Shakti mantra. And this is what Yogi Bhajan said about the mantra. It says, these eight vibrations, this holy sound, are sufficient to tune in the unit consciousness into the Supreme Consciousness. Now let us be one with him who is Ekamkara Satnam Siddhi Wahi Guru. We have given an illustration of the Ashtang Mantra, which has eight notes in it. Those who know Laya Yoga can really understand how powerful this chant will become. It will take us across the infinite shores of the existent world. Once we create these vibrations through our mental tune-up, the mind goes into it, the body goes into it, and ultimately the spirit, the soul, takes over everything. 
then one who is a physical, mental, and spiritual being becomes one divine being. In this neutral way, one crosses to the, in the infinite boundaries, and for a moment, that great power of the cosmos prevails through him or her. So, you may have practiced this before. I love practicing this because it really, once you get going with the mantra, in a certain sense, it's a little bit difficult to stop. And it really creates that powerful sound current that will carry us across through into this new cycle of time and allow the divinity to flow through you and allow you to be you. So, the mantra, Ekankar, is one creator in this creation. Satnam, its, it's existence is true. Siddhi Waheguru, great beyond words, is its wisdom. And so, on the ek, you pull in the navel point. And then you add a little extra syllable to each p uh, parts of this. So it's ekunkara satanama siriwa e guru. So it's one, two, three and a half cycles. And you bring this mantra up in a spiral, spiral like a helix of DNA, out, up through the spine, through the body, and out the top of the head. And so. It sounds like this, on the ah uh sound, you're gonna pull up on the diaphragm. Eyes will be closed, focused at the brow point. Ekankara satanama siriwa e guru. Ekankara satanama siriwa e guru. Ekankara satanama Siri wa e guru. Okay, so um, it's hard for me to actually. I got into the space where it's a little bit difficult for me to talk after a few repetitions. But I want you to do this for 11 minutes along with me for this month of December. We'll use the tune in mantra, Om Namo Guru Dev Namo, before we practice, and at the end, We'll sing the sunshine song or a few long satnams to bless the world as we as we finish up this first year of the Aquarian age, 2012. We go into the new physical year, January, and the new cycle of time as the new Mayan calendar begins anew. So thanks for practicing with me and may you have a wonderful winter solstice. Satnam. <laughs>